Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Today we're going to be doing a full and complete review of Sofa Baton's brand new X1 Universal Remote Control. Now, I am a home theater enthusiast that is absolutely passionate about all things home theater. And in my home theater, over the past probably 10 to 12 years, I have used a Harmony One. Uh, I began with a Harmony One Universal Remote Control. And then now I use a Harmony Elite remote control. Well, of course, over the past several months, we received notification from Logitech that they are no longer going to be manufacturing a Harmony product. And so those are being discontinued. And eventually the support for that is going to be non-existent, even though they claim that they're going to continue to support it. So as consumers, this video is going to be more of from a consumer standpoint because I myself am looking for what can replace my Harmony Elite. And today we're gonna to be looking at one of Sofa Baton's brand new remote controls. They previously had a U1. I did not get a chance to review that. So this is my first experience with Sofa Baton. But in this video, I just wanna take you through everything that I know about it. Over the past few weeks that I've used it, I'm gonna walk you through how to set it up, how you can create activities, um, add devices and so forth. And I'm also going to share with you some things that that I didn't find useful on the remote, some things that I think that they can improve on either in this current model or in future models. And one thing that I'm pretty pumped about, and this will kind of tell you where we are as an audio community and home theater community, Sofa Baton has a Kickstarter program for this remote. It still has nine days left. On their Kickstarter program, they were desiring $10,000, and as of right now, they are sitting at $602,000. Um, so that tells me, from a community standpoint, that we all are looking for replacement for the Logitech Harmony. Now, I have a link to their Kickstarter program down in the description below if you find that this is a product that you would like to incorporate into your home theater. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the review of the Sofa Baton X1 Universal Remote Control. All right, so since this is a pre-production unit, your packaging may look a little bit different than this, but on top we've got our Universal Remote Manual in color. So we'll lay that off to the side. We've got the actual unit here. We'll talk about the design and aesthetics of that in a moment. Underneath here, we've got the hub. We have two USB-C cables. One you'll use to charge the remote. The other we'll use to connect to the hub. A power brick to provide power to the hub as well as charge your remote. And some IR extenders that allow you to connect to individual devices in case the IR blaster doesn't reach. All right, the next thing we want to do is download the app. So we're going to click download. Once the app's downloaded, we'll go ahead and open. So here it's going to ask, would you like to use Bluetooth? So you definitely want to hit OK there. All right, so if you have an account already with them, you can log in, which I already have one. If not, you're going to need to click this no account to register at the bottom but I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my user name and email. And we click login. All right, once we get to this screen, you're presented with which remote do you have? In this case, we have the X1 with the hub, so we're gonna click that. So Sofa Baton would like to connect to your local network. We're gonna click OK. And from here, we're gonna click the X1 hub. So this screen here is a little different, okay? So over on the right, it says renew. Honestly, that's probably a, an improper um, button. So if I click renew, it's going to stay in a spinning cycle. I'm assuming it's wanting to update the firmware, but it does not ever do that. It says we're on version five. There's two updates available but the only way I've been able to get past this is to click next update, which I'm assuming is letting the software know that it's going to skip this update and we'll try again on the next time. So we're gonna click next update. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is there's two things you need to do 
to sync the hub. Number one, you're going to need to press and hold this button on the back. And then this front is going to blink blue. And then once you pair it, then that's going to sync up those two devices. It did not show this uh, on mine because I've already done that previously. Now, one thing to note that I had to find out the hard way is in the instructions, it tells you to pair the hub. And so that's all fine and dandy. I showed you how to do that. But what they failed to do is add the instructions on how to pair the remote with that hub until the last page. So make sure you go ahead and do that. You're gonna hit both of those buttons, the top right, which is the back button and the off button. Press that, it'll say it's pairing and it'll pair the uh, remote with the hub as well. Now I wish I could tell you that that initial process was seamless and without any issues, but I did have several hiccups during the initial setup of trying to pair it with the hub um, as well as pairing the remote. So just know going into it, um, hopefully firmware updates in the future will make that process a little more seamless. But nonetheless, here we are on the home screen. So down at the bottom, you've got a button for devices, activities, and one for me. So we're gonna start on the devices tab. Up at the top right, you're gonna click add, and you're going to type in the brand that you have. For me, I've got a Marantz, and you can see there's a drop down list here. So I click Marantz, then I'm gonna type in AV7706, hit done, and click search. And then you can change the icon for that. So if I click this arrow here, you can see the list of icons we have to choose from. Unfortunately, right now, there's not a lot of different icons, so hopefully you're doing the future, they'll be able to add more of those. But for now, we're just gonna get a little receiver icon. We'll select that one, and we're gonna click complete. So as you can see here, it's taking quite a while for this to complete. This is another one of the bugs that I ran into when reviewing this unit. Sometimes um, it would search for a product and it would try to add it to the app but for whatever reason, it never finishes that. So I'm gonna try hitting complete again and nothing happens. So I'm gonna click back and we're gonna try it again. Hit search, complete. And now it says the code library is being transferred to your hub. So what that's gonna do is take all that data for that remote, uh, the Marantz remote, and it's gonna download those into the hub so it can control that. So it just takes a few seconds, usually about 10, 15 seconds and then it'll transfer that data over to the hub. And then when it's, once it's complete, we can have that as one of our devices listed within the app. So I placed the hub in front of the Marantz just for this demo so that you can see it function. And if I click to test boot, it turns on the Marantz and we can say, yes, that worked out fine. So this is complete, so we can click the green button and that'll take us back to the home screen. So using that same step, you can see I've already added my Pioneer 4K player. So let's say we wanted to add an Nvidia Shield because this is a little bit different. We're gonna click add. We're gonna use the icon up here at the top that says Nvidia. We're gonna confirm that it's going to use Bluetooth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose an icon, this little multimedia and we'll click complete. So it's gonna download those codes to the hub. And once it's finished, it's going to present you with some information on how to pair that with the NVIDIA Shield. So what you're gonna to need to do is go into the settings of the Shield, come down to Remotes and Accessories, and we're gonna to go to Add Bluetooth Accessories. We'll click OK. It's going to search for it, and you can see at the top right, it says sofa baton, we'll click okay. It's gonna ask, is it okay to pair it with this device? We'll click pair. And now the sofa baton is paired and we can click test to boot and we'll just go ahead and say yes because we can control it and complete. And now the Nvidia Shield is added to our devices. And now if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see the sofa baton has been added as one of our remote devices. Okay, so here you see I've got my Marantz AV7706 processor, the Pioneer UDP 4K player. We've got the NVIDIA Shield connected. The last thing in my setup I need to add is my projector. So we'll click Add. We're going to type in JVC. 
We'll click JVC from the dropdown. And I have the DLA NX7. Now I've tried typing in NX7, DLA NX7, um, even the NS3000 or NS2000 and searching. And each time it says that isn't in the database. So basically what they're going to do is present you with some default um, libraries. So at the bottom, we'll click um, already know that. Basically, it's going to take us to the next screen. It's going to say, okay, what kind of device are we trying to connect? It's going to give us some libraries that hopefully will connect and will allow you to control that device. So this is a projector. So down at the bottom left, it says Pro. So we'll click that. And then here you can see there's five options. These are five libraries of codes that hopefully will control my projector. But there's also a drop down arrow at the very bottom. So now you can see there's actually eight of those. So basically what you'll need to do if the library doesn't pull up your device and it takes you to this screen and says, hey, choose one of these options. Um, you'll just have to go through each option and see if that set of libraries will control your device. Now, once I click option one, you can see here's a list of all the various commands that this default code library will support. Right now, I do not have a cable running all the way back like an IR cable to the projector, so I'm not able to test this feature with my JVC because the connection type is a little different on the Sofa Baton than on my Harmony Elite Hub. And so for now, I'll back out of this and I'll just use my JVC remote to power on and off my projector. Once you've added all of your devices, the next step is you're going to create activities. So we're going to click on the bottom middle button that says activities, and we're going to click the add at the top. So the first step is what do you want to be in this activity? So we're going to create a watch TV using the Nvidia Shield. So one thing we need to do is turn on the Marantz. We're also going to be using the Nvidia Shield, but we do not need the Pioneer 4K player. So we'll leave that unchecked and we'll click next. So from here, we need to tell Sofa Baton which input to use on the Marantz that the Nvidia Shield is connected to. So we'll click select a source and we'll click to configure. And we're gonna use this top option. There's several options here you can see, but basically the Nvidia, I'm sorry, the Marantz has individual inputs for each one of the HDMI inputs. So we're gonna use this top option that says switch sources with one click. So we'll click next, we'll click the plus, and then it's going to show us all the menu items on the Marant. So we're gonna to have to scroll down here and we're gonna find input game is what I've got it connected to, and we'll click confirm. Now we'll click the complete at the bottom, and we're going to select input game. Down at the bottom, we'll click next. So you can see here, it's gonna turn on the Marantz, it's gonna turn on the Nvidia Shield, and right now they're all on, so we're gonna click next at the bottom. On this screen, it's asking us, when we hit the up and down arrows or the mute on the Sofa Baton remote, what is that going to control? In my case, that's going to be the Marantz. We'll click next. Then it's gonna ask, what are the other buttons? Once that's all powered on, what do we want these other buttons to control? In that case, we actually want it to control the NVIDIA Shield. That way we can use it to navigate through the shield, through the menus, and so forth. So we'll select the NVIDIA Shield and click Next. Now we're gonna give it a name, and we're just gonna call this Watch TV, because that's how I watch TV in my room. And then you can select an icon, but we'll just leave it by default, and we'll click Complete. So now we see that we've got an activity called Watch TV. And if I click Watch TV, it's going to go through each one of those steps. It's going to turn on the Marantz. It's going to set it to game input. Then it's going to turn on the NVIDIA Shield. And then now we can use the Sofa Baton remote to navigate through the Shield menu. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one real quick. So we're going to do the Marantz and the Pioneer this time. Hit Next. We're going to select the Marantz. Instead of input game, we're going to click uh, the top right button, click next. We're going to click the plus. And instead of input game, this time I need input DVD or Blu-ray. So we'll scroll down to input 
and we're going to change that to input. I believe I've got it on DVD. So we'll uncheck. Yeah, so we'll just, so we're going to add input DVD to that. Hit confirm. Hit complete. So now we're going to be able to say, I want that input when I'm using watch a movie to be the input on the Marantz, which is the DVD. We'll click next. Both of those will turn on. Same thing here. We want the Marantz to control the volume, but we want the Pioneer to control the navigation. And so for this activity, I'm just going to call it watch 4K because that's my 4K player. And we'll click, uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to change this to this little kind of movie DVD icon down at the bottom, and we'll click complete. So now, as you see, we've got two different activities. One's called Watch TV, and one is called Watch 4K, which would be my 4K player. Now, if you want to rearrange the order that your activities are set in, you can click the sort button at the top, click and hold for a few seconds, and then you can drag these up and down. So again, you've got to kind of click and hold until it allows you to select, and then you can let go. And when you're done, hit the complete button at the top. If we go back to activities at the bottom left, you can do the same thing here. So we can click sort. And just to satisfy my OCD, I'm gonna click and drag Nvidia Shield up here so that they're in alphabetical order. We'll hit complete at the top right, and that saves those changes. Now under activities, if we click the right arrow for watch TV, this again is kind of another quirk. So this actually just stays in this and nothing actually happens. So this is one of those things where I swipe up, I go back to watch TV, it doesn't do anything. So once you have everything set up the way you want it in the app, you're gonna pick up the remote. We're gonna come down to set and we're gonna press down on this wheel. And we're gonna go to syncing. So now that's going to sync all of the information that we've downloaded to the hub, to the physical remote here. Oh, what do you know? We've got a lost hub notification here. So again, another one of these little quirks that I can't explain why. So looking back at my phone, it says, hey, you're not connected to the hub. So apparently it lost sync with that. So we're gonna say, sure, let it sync back up with the hub. Click on that. Next. So now we should be synced back up with the hub. Let's try this again. So we're gonna go back, set, syncing. And now let's see if it syncs. Lost hub. So again, guys, not sure what the issue is here, but that is just some of the frustrations I've had with this remote. So another bug that I ran into is right now I've got the Marantz turned on. I can go into the app you may not be able to see it, but I can click Marantz and I can click the power button at the top left. And as you can see, the Marantz is not turning off. If I try to use the sofa baton remote going down to devices, Marantz, I have to scroll down like, goodness, it's about 28 times to get to the power button. So all the way here. And if I click power off, you can see nothing happens. Power doesn't change it. Power on doesn't change it. The off button up here, it says close, but then nothing happens. So again, I'm not sure what's going on here, but it ain't working. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the remote itself. Number one, I mentioned earlier, I really like the way that this feels. It's got a really nice feel in the hand. It feels very balanced and I love the soft edges and even the roundness of the remote itself. But there are a couple things that kind of, um, that I wish they could improve on and hopefully they'll take the information from this and uh, use that to make this remote even better in the future. Number one is I would love to see this little wheel here allows you to cycle through, you know, the different functions. But to me, typically I'm holding the remote way down here and maybe you're different, but the natural place for navigation would be here. But as you can see, I can't control that. So these buttons do nothing for here. So I have to literally stretch up a little bit further and use this.
But one of the big issues I've had with it is if I want to go back to the previous menu, if I want to do this one handed, I physically have to scroll this thing all the way up like this, click back and then bring it all the way back down, which is really awkward. So you'd have to use two hands to hold it here, click that, change it back. Just a little annoyance. I would love to see it maybe right here would be a good fit. So then as you're scrolling, if you went into activities and wanted to go back, you could click right here. That would be a good place for it. Um, or maybe even over here. That'd be a, to me a perfect place. So I'd love to see that. The other thing I noticed is it's probably gonna be difficult to see here, but this screen is really, really sensitive to uh, fingerprints. So if I just press one time right here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there are some major fingerprint right around that back button. So I don't know if it's the type of coding that they put on here, but it definitely shows fingerprints really, really easy. So you're gonna continually have to be cleaning this in order for it to look nice. So overall, I really like the direction that Sofa Baton is going. I think they're making some really great strides to get into a remote that can compete with the Harmony. Um, the only issue that I have is it's quite buggy right now, at least the unit that I received. Um, hopefully with firmware updates over the future, they can get a lot of those bugs worked out and it's a more seamless process. But for me, initially setting it up, I had issues with it uh, connecting to the hub. I had issues when I was trying to sync the hub to the remote um, and just various things like that. One time I had the, the remote itself just have this hideous um, kind of squealing noise for a little while. I'm like, what did we just do? So it didn't like whatever I did for whatever reason. So I've just had some a lot of issues with this and even making this video, I was really hoping to kind of, uh, now that I've used it, I had it all set up, I was going to go in and delete everything and kind of walk you step by step through it. And hopefully this video is somewhat helpful in that respect, but even making this video, there were several parts of that initial setup that it just took me a while to get it to sync together. And so, uh, what you're seeing on this video isn't necessarily the amount of time it took me to set this up. Um, there are definitely some um, more advanced features in the menu that you can do to set delays in case of maybe one of your items isn't uh, powering on properly. And so I didn't dive into that, honestly, again, uh, just because of some of the frustrations that I had with this remote. But like I said, I think Sofa Baton is off to a good start. Hopefully with the additional income they received from their Kickstarter, that'll give us give them a lot more money uh, to kind of put into the R&D and the programming side of this so that they can get this working really solidly. Now what I'd love to see Sofa Baton uh, come out with is a remote that would really compete with the Harmony Elite, one that has uh, radio frequency, one that uh, has a touch screen, I like that feature, um, and one that even has a colored screen. So at this price point, I think they're selling it for about $100. Um, for the most part, I mean, it is what, it's, it's kind of one of those things where uh, you get what you pay for. And so it's gonna be a $100 remote. I think it works decent, um, but again, it's just quite buggy for me uh, and my experience, but hopefully with firmware updates, they'll get all of those bugs worked out. Well guys, if you found the video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe because I have weekly content on home theaters, tips, tours, as well as product reviews like this one. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.